Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com, where I help you design smarter, not harder. And today we're gonna break down these two designs that I did for Dua Lipa. Let's get to it. So let's start with this one that you've probably seen before because I use it as an example quite often. And neither of these two designs that I'm showcasing got officially approved, unfortunately. But who knows, maybe they'll circle back and approve these. So if you're an art director watching this, you already know what to do. Either way, let's break this down. So I'll turn off all my layers here and I'll just start at the bottom. So this was the original photo that I was sent to work with. Really an amazing photograph. It pretty much carried this design. So shout out to the photographer and the stylist and makeup artist and all that. I just thought that this would be absolutely perfect for a tee. And I really liked how these ropes here could lead up to some other elements like text or something. Uh, so that's what I ended up doing. I started out here on the image with this mask. So I did some basic masking just to fade out the edges of this image. So we don't have those harsh edges all around the image. Nothing fancy, of course, just use a soft brush here to fade this all out. Also, because the image was really grainy, I used my denoiser action from my JPEG decompressor action pack, which is available on my shop. So this was the result after that. Just got rid of all that unnecessary grain because I was gonna add my own later. Then the next layer up here is this blocking layer, which I just painted with black with a soft brush to block out these parts of the rope to make way for the incoming text. But I don't know why I didn't just do this in the layer mask. Not sure why I did that. I'm sure there was a reason. Heat of the moment, maybe. Of course, we've got the text. It's in this neat little group here, and it's this really cool chrome effect. So I made this using a very early version of Chrome Tone, which is now fully developed. It's an action pack for a ton of cool custom and preset chrome effects on your text or any artwork. Would definitely, definitely recommend that. Go cop that on my store. And then I've just got some minor adjustments clipped to this layer. So we have a, what is this a gradient map here so it's black to white and then i just turn the opacity down on this just for some more contrast and to darken up the colors here when i zoomed out i just thought the text was a little too blue to match with the faded blues of the photo here so i added this layer for some contrast and to desaturate those colors and then i have a selective color adjustment on top of all this to really blow out the blues and make them a bit more cyan ish and this is actually just using one of the presets from furler mo's bootleg wrap selective color packs so go check that out on his website i thought that added a really nice glare and finish to the chrome and then you can't have chrome without some flares so i added those up here in this group called text accents and this is just to accent certain parts of the chrome using flares so i believe this is also for fuller mo as a part of one of his airbrush kits. So just some flare or sparkle PNGs on top here. By the way, Fuller and I have a collab airbrush product in his airbrush bundle. So if you wanna go pick that up and support your boy as well as the GOAT Fuller Mo at the same time, head to his website, fullermo.com, pick up the airbrush bundle. So now the text is looking pretty nice, but I feel like it's not fully incorporated into the graphic yet. So what I did was add some sort of framing and some smoky elements here to kind of incorporate it more with the background of the photograph. So that's what I did up here in this group called sky backing. So that's a pretty damn cool effect that we got for the back and the glow of the text. One thing I actually forgot to mention is down here in the text, I do have a drop shadow on that Chrome just to add some glow in there. So that's two drop shadows. If I open up the layer styles here, it's one white drop shadow and that's obviously for the white kind of glare around the text. And then this blue drop shadow for the glow extending all around the text. And that also really does a lot of heavy lifting. So you see if I turn that off, the texture doesn't really fit into the graphic, but this glow really helps put it in place. So back up to the backing of the text here where I use these smoky elements and cloudy elements to kind of fit it into the composition. Like I said, really cool effect, but I did it in sort of a wonky way. And so what I did was I took or I found this photograph of a, or maybe not a photograph, it was just some artwork of a moonlit sky. And I really liked the intricacies in the sky here. And I believe I also denoised the image prior to using this uh, so that it was more smooth and would fit better around the text. But anyway, like I said, I really like the intricacy in the sky here. So what I did was set this layer to screen so that it isolates all the highlights of this and I could place it wherever I want um, and it incorporate itself with the values and colors below it. And I just masked out parts of that sky to fit it into the text. You see here, I masked out a very tiny part of the sky and just put it behind the text here. And then I rinsed and repeated that multiple times all the way around the text um, just to give it that really smoky and cloudy feel. Then all the way up here, we've got some more accents for the graphic. These I believe are also all from Fuller Mo's airbrush pack. So go pick that up. We love Fuller Mo. That's my boy. So we've got these clusters of stars around here as well as these splatters, these kind of airbrush splatters and this brush stroke going around the whole pretty much top of the composition here, which was actually just a pretty huge circular airbrush frame, but then I masked it out alongside these stars to kind of make them look like shooting stars, which I thought was really cool. And that's pretty much the gist of the graphic. After all the compositing, it is time for all the color and value adjustments. So that's what I have all the way up here. So I started off with some noise. This is just a simple noise overlay here, which is a 50% gray layer with noise added to that. And then I set that to overlay to get noise 
all overly graphic. I mean, I don't really have to explain that, right? Noise just makes everything look better. And then most importantly, we've got all our filters here. So I've got this selective color adjustment on top doing most of the heavy lifting color wise. This is a custom preset I did pretty much just blowing out all the mid tones and the blues here. I'll run through the settings really quick if you want to steal this. So here are the reds, the yellows, greens, blues, oops, cyans, uh, magentas, whites, neutrals, and blacks. Then up here in this group, I've just masked out some highlights using the selective color adjustments and hue and saturation. And I just put that in various spots around the image uh, to just get some more color variance in there. So here's before that and here's after, really minor change. And finally, I added a cooling filter on top of this to push the blues a little bit and bring all the color together. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's move on to the next design. This one is really, really simple, guys. Let me hide all the layers here so we can go back to start. So I just started off with this image of Dewey here that I was sent and I enlarged it and cropped it just to her head and her torso. Then on a new layer up here, I did a quick brush along the bottom of the photo to fade that out. And that's just using a soft brush, but you see it's a pretty grainy fade. And that's because I have the layer blending mode set to dissolve. And that pretty much dithers any transparency you have on the layer. That's gonna give it that really nice grainy feel. Then this layer up here is just a tiny color adjustment that I did using a soft brush. I just brushed on some pink onto the highlight of her shoulder here. I just wanted to bring out some more pink in the lower half of the image to kind of tie it in visually with the pinks all around her face. Then I did this custom logo type for her using blur and threshold, which unfortunately I do not know where the file for that went, but here's the original custom type that I did. It was nothing crazy. I just assembled the letters and icons and then used some blur and threshold to get it looking all merged and melted, which is a really cool look for this graphic. And then I duplicated that and made that pink using color overlay in layer styles. And then up here, I added some highlights onto this using bevel and emboss. And then I actually thresholded that. So if I open up this group, you can see that it's actually just a bevel and emboss on this text here. Super, super simple layer style. And then I duplicated that twice just so it would pop out more. And then I thresholded that and added a black layer beneath those two and put that all in a group. And I set that group to light in to isolate the white parts of that. But if I turn this back to normal, you can see pretty much the workflow for this. So I had that black background, the bevel and emboss on this logo here. And then I thresholded those to get this really clean, sharp white highlight, put that all in a group and set it to lighten to isolate the whites. Then all the way on top here, we've got a custom LUT, which is just a group of color adjustments pretty much. And you can access any LUTs in Photoshop using the color lookup adjustment. And that allows you to choose from any LUTs that you may have or made. This one here is a custom one I did that blows out all the mid-tones pretty much and just increases all the luminance of all the colors. It's sort of similar to the tutorial I did a while back on that vintage 90s magazine look. So that's a few videos down on my channel. If you scroll down enough, you'll find it. And that'll get you pretty close to this look, but I consolidated that all into a custom LUT for me to use. I'll actually be coming out with a pack of custom LUTs that you can use very, very soon. So you'll be able to choose from a nice variety of cool color effects on your images. This one will be included, of course. That will be very soon, so stay tuned and make sure you subscribe to the mailing list that's at the bottom of my website to receive notice when that pack comes out. A fun thing about LUTs also is you can pretty much reverse the color order using this parameter here, which I wouldn't really use that for this project, obviously, but I'm sure there's some uses you can find with that. If you're at all familiar with video editing, then you're familiar with LUTs. Again, it's pretty much just a group of different color adjustments. There's a ton of different LUTs that come with Photoshop, like these film camera simulation LUTs and so on. For this, I used a custom LUT that I saved into my project folder here. So this LUT and many others will be available to you soon. And then to finish this off, I just have this gradient map up here, which I masked to her lips just to make them pop with that pink color to tie it in with her eyeshadow and the type down here. So that's a pretty simple gradient here just a purple to pink to yellow. Actually, that's not very simple, but you get the idea here. It's just purple, pink, yellow, just to match the tones of the image in place, but enhance the pinks on her lips. And then I mask that, of course, just to her lips and turn the opacity down. And that gets us that nice pink color and pretty much ties in all the color of this graphic and looks pretty good. And that is a wrap. Let me know which one of my designs you wanna see me break down next, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.